Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 527. Lower your blood pressure, your blood sugar, relax, sleep better with one important mineral, magnesium. Bio Balance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of Bio Balance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Americans are marketed throughout our society to view food as a fun activity and a, and a, a good thing to, to deal with, not from a nutritional scientific standpoint. Most of us don't look at food that way. We look at it in terms of what we crave, what we enjoy, our comfort foods, gravies, sugars, and, and salts. We're trained by the people that make and sell food to look at it that way. But physicians look at it differently, and they wish that we would look at it differently as well, because if we looked at our food from a more scientific perspective, we would have less significant killer illnesses that would help us stay alive longer and live healthier lives while we're alive. So one of the elements of that that we want to talk about today has to do with the fact that uh, most of our body component is water, and we come depending on your religious beliefs, we come from seawater. And seawater has some ingredients in it that we don't typically get in our diets. Now, if you live on the coast, you may. I mean, one of the things we're going to talk about today is uh, how do you magnesium, which is the element that we're going to discuss, and how do you get enough of magnesium in your diet if, if there's a reason to do so. And we suggest, science suggests, that you should have magnesium in your diet. If you live on the coast, you can eat oysters, uh, or you can eat lobster or shrimp or things like that mm-hmm. that will put, I mean, three oysters will give you enough magnesium for a day mm-hmm. for what the recommended daily allotment is. Mm-hmm. But if you live inland, you're less likely to be able to have that as a regular component of your diet. So what are you going to be able to eat? What are you going to need to eat? First, let's talk about why we're discussing the mineral magnesium. Why is it important to us, Kathy? Well, magnesium is one of one of the minerals that actually balances calcium. Now, everybody talks about calcium, and we have a lot mm-hmm. of calcium-fortified foods. So Americans, in general, have a lot of calcium, and we don't talk about magnesium, which gives us the balance for the calcium. So calcium for bone structure? For bones, for muscles, it causes, it helps muscles contract. Magnesium helps muscles relax. So to... But- the com- the complement the, yeah so it's the yin and yeah. yin and yang of these two mm-hmm. very important um, minerals so I I have the theory or actually the belief it's not really a theory because it's already been theorized but I have the belief that when we get high blood pressure when we get muscle spasms when we ha- get depression and we we have all kinds of imbalances mm-hmm. in our body oftentimes that's from not enough magnesium especially high blood pressure. Magnesium dilates the blood vessels and decreases the pressure within the blood vessel. Mm -hmm. So people who have high blood pressure should really be taking magnesium every day because it's in and out of your body every day. You need to have it every day. It's not something you build up. So that helps lower your blood pressure. It helps lower the tension in your blood vessels so you don't get hardening of the arteries. So if you don't have magnesium in your system, you're more likely than to have a stroke or have high, high anxiety high blood, levels that cause you to have a stroke. Or high blood pressure that causes High stroke. blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so constipation. We, yes, and constipation. We need these. We need magnesium to avoid all of these different illnesses. Mm-hmm. Now we know that we need magnesium to avoid diabetes. Okay. And heart disease. So these, the, there's been a recent study that showed that people that had adequate amounts of magnesium actually had a lower rate of having diabetes and, and of course, blood, high blood pressure and heart disease. So in many ways, having the right amount of magnesium in your diet or taking a supplement 
helps you avoid other illnesses. And it's a cheap, easy way to actually avoid illness. It's not taking a drug. It's just taking a supplement or eating differently. So what we talked about earlier before we were on camera was that we, ha we have to change how we look at food. Mm -hmm. Food is fuel, and it is getting the proper elements in every single day. In the day. right balance, yeah. In the right balance. And if you don't have something and have too much of what balances it, you're going to end up being sick. Like because, iodine. Right. You have magnesium. to have iodine right. for your thyroid and, right. and for fibrocystic breasts. So if you don't have enough iodine, you have, women have fibrocystic breasts, which are painful and sometimes make it hard to see their mammograms. If you have not enough iodine, you also get low thyroid. And there's a lot of places in the country, mostly the Midwest, that doesn't have any iodine in its water or it's in, in its ground. So that should be supplemented. This isn't something the government necessarily takes over and says you need to do this. They used to put iodine in a lot of foods. Yeah. And that's a whole, well, an they, entirely They did it with fluoride subject. for your teeth, but they don't well, do yeah, it with they, iodine. Right. But fluoride yeah. actually bumps iodine off out of the water. So, yeah. so it is negative toward iodine. So we need it even more when we drink fluorinated water. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that are working against us. So our bodies need to have magnesium, we're speaking about today. Many other supplements uh, or elements are important for our bodies. But in this case, um, a lot of patients come in and say, I've got muscle cramps. Now, mm -hmm. that could be um, a lack of blood flow to their legs. But right. I, in, in older people, that's one of the things it could be. But before you start going to get a bunch of uh, blood flow tests and getting x-rays and getting CAT scans, it would, you should replace your magnesium and see if that makes it go away. So one of the easiest ways, I mean, you can take magnesium orally, but you can also take it through your skin. It actually goes into your skin and you can absorb it. So when your mother told you to go sit in a bathtub of Epsom salts, she was giving you magnesium yeah. through your skin. Right. And that lowered your blood pressure. And if you were anxious and upset or whatever, it calmed you down. You know, it's and funny, your muscles old wives' got, tales and, and old women who learned these things as children before every corner had a pharmacy, a CVS or a Walgreens or whatever, and mm -hmm. every doctor was focusing on this stuff. I mean, I remember my grandmother putting my grandfather in an Epsom salt mm -hmm. bath because he worked hard all day, and mm -hmm. as he aged, he'd have these muscle cramps and things. Right. And she said, go soak in the tub. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, go soak your head. But yeah, well. uh, she was talking about something else then. But, I mean, so, so they knew this even then mm -hmm. produced the results, even if they didn't know why. Mm -hmm. And so the science tells you, well, it's the magnesium mm -hmm. absorption. Right. So sci science explains what they've been telling us for years. And a lot of the things, I, you know, that grandmothers tell you do have some basis in science. Yeah, It's absolutely. interesting to actually run those things down. Well, and the focus of your practice, as people age, they come in with all kinds of symptoms and concerns about potential illnesses that they may acquire as they get older. Balance, muscle strength, weight gain, mm -hmm. uh, sex drive, a lot of different things. And so you focus on hormone replacement. So you restore their hormones to levels that position them as if they were younger, mm -hmm. uh, and what their bodies were like when they were younger. But then you also say, we got to talk about your eating habits and your exercise habits. So, you know, so if you smoke, if you drink too much, if you have too much sugar, because the obesity epidemic in the United States is causing an, a rapid increase in diabetes, and people are dying from that. So we need to stabilize your diet. And one of the things that you do is you offer supplements to the diet, and there are four supplements that you classically suggest to anybody that comes in mm -hmm. who lives in the Midwest. And and one, we've already mentioned two of them. Magnesium is one. Mm -hmm. uh, iodine is one. Mm -hmm. The other two are vitamin D, three, three. and mm -hmm. uh, methyl B. Mm -hmm. So th those four you recommend to almost everybody, right. and then anybody that has a unique concern, you will address that as well. Mm -hmm. If you don't live on the coast, then you should probably be taking iodine mm -hmm. because it's just such a common deficiency. And magnesium is essential because it's not in a lot of our foods except for shellfish and and uh, and red meat. And then we have we have a list of some other things that are kind of unusual that it's in, but we just don't eat a lot of those things. I contend that if you think you have a good diet, <laughs> that you actually look at everything you eat every day 
and you're not going to be getting your six servings of vegetables and five or four of yeah. fruit. And Recommended you're not, daily amount. I mean, yeah. you're not even get, going to get close with yeah. the diet, the kind of diet that Americans have. And I have never once met anyone who had an adequate diet. Mm -hmm. So that's why supplements are important. The American Medical Association, in their uh, lack of wisdom, always says, ah, oh, you don't need supplements. You don't need that. I'm not sure why they say that, why that's their view. But if they took apart what everybody eats on a normal day, they find that people don't get enough of their, of their essential vitamins and minerals. So that's something, I think, to be healthy and to prevent illness, we should all have. Vitamin D is, is the third element that we talk about. And that is because nobody is outside without sunscreen anymore. They don't get their vitamin D from the sun. And right. that's if, obviously the most efficient place to get it. But it also is, we, don't, we also don't work outside. Not Most of us don't work outside all the time. So, and we live in the Northern Hemisphere. So mm, we kind of have a lot of problems with getting enough sunshine anyway, mm -hmm. unless we travel to the south. But but still, even then, my farmers, I tell to take vitamin D starting in September, because they're not outside so much and the sun isn't as strong, and then ending in March, because then the rest of the time they're outside and they're getting their own vitamin D. Well, you get the classic farmer's tan. They wear those um, wife beater shirts mm -hmm. and a hat. And mm -hmm. they just get tanned in like two elements of their body. So That's true. It's not like the American Indians who are outside with That's true. A yeah. breech but, cloth or something. Yeah, and we're not yeah. living as as uh, naked people, so we don't <laughs> we don't get enough we don't get enough so, of our. So what can we eat if we if we don't want to take a supplement? If I come to your office and you'll sell me some supplements or tell me go get them at, at mm -hmm. the pharmacy, you say, well, change your diet, eat these products. Well, normally, I mean, if, if you're just talking about magnesium, I'd say you need some oysters, you need a lobster, you need some, you need shellfish. But shellfish have their own problems. Yeah. Shellfish are filter feeders, so they collect all of the uh, heavy metals from the water. Yeah, and the, the cockroaches of the sea. The pollution. Yeah. So you may be getting too, uh, too much mercury if you have that or, or some other thing that we've polluted our oceans with. So I get so frustrated with all this stuff. I say, I, I'll just eat sugar. Yeah, well, for you, that would be a bad thing. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, <laughs> gosh, I hope well, but, not. But one of the items on the list is dark chocolate. Right. But it's not about the sugar in the dark chocolate. Ah. It's about the dark chocolate itself. Okay. So so that's that's one of the good things that has magnesium in it, and that is dark chocolate. So if you have a square of dark chocolate every day, you're going to get some of your magnesium. But you can tell if you're constipated, you need more magnesium. If you have... If your blood pressure is going up, you need more magnesium. If you have muscle cramps, which many of us do who do any kind of exercise, you need magnesium. So those are three things that you can ask yourself or view, look at yourself and say, do I have that? But if you're just depending on your diet and you don't eat a lot of shellfish and a lot of chocolate and a lot of cashews. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. And cashews. And what else? Uh, cashews, uh, sesame seeds, Swiss chard. Pumpkin seeds, spinach, almonds, soybeans, soy products. You have pigeon. You have pigeon. Peas. Pigeon peas. I don't that? know what they are. It was just on the list that I looked up. Uh, yeah, the okay. Google machine told me. And soybeans, I'll have to give you. Unless you're Asian, soy is not very good for you hmm. because it binds up your thyroid. So it it basically causes you to have hypothyroidism. So wow, it's and it also has a lot of um, estrogen. So you shouldn't eat tofu. No. Hmm. Not unless you're Asian. If you're Asian, it's great. Genetically, they're genetically they're they're made for it. Wow! But, I did not um, know that. But soy, Learned something here every week. There's soy in so many of our products that my daughter and I go to the store and we're looking at the yeah we're looking at the ice cream. They put soy in ice cream. Oh, I yeah. mean, we're trying to avoid. Well, soy. it's a filler. Yeah, it's a filler. But the other thing is, it makes estrogen. So if you're a guy and you're eating a lot of soy uh, containing products. You're going to make more estrogen. It's going to bind up your testosterone. I mean, there's so many downstream. You're going to get man boobs. I mean, yeah. too much ice cream. That's what I was about yeah. to say. You're going to have so many downstream implications yeah. right. of of eating soy that it's just it's not a good idea. And I know that a lot of people who are vegan or vegetarian eat a lot of soy, but I mean, if you check their estrogens, you're going to find that, that their estrone and estradiol are too high. I mean, it's not necessarily a good thing to have 
estrone to be a high so in the in, in the notes body. in the notes that you prepare for our conversation, mm -hmm. you included a paragraph that I would like to read because I think it's it's relevant. Okay. In general, the role for the min mineral magnesium is ubiquitous to the human body's function. Magnesium is needed for peristalsis in the intestines, the activity that pushes food along the GI tract to relax skeletal muscles, to relax blood vessels, to lower blood pressure, the production of antidepressants in the brain, synthesization of neuro normal neurotransmitters, and normalized insulin resistance, as well as insulin production to prevent diabetes. So all of that is a positive from having an adequate amount, enough magnesium. magnesium. Right. That's... And, and, I, and I, nobody I, talks about it. I was going to say, nobody talks about it. I haven't read, I've read about the iodine and the vitamin B12 mm -hmm. and vitamin D and all those things just normally in, in mass media publications. Mm -hmm. But I haven't really read anything about magnesium. And that's why we're talking about it, because we do have a lot of calcium. I mean, I would suggest that if you eat milk products, if right. you eat cheese or yogurt or dairy. any kind of dairy products, you don't have to drink milk. But, I mean, if you eat those other things that right. have calcium in them, then you should be eating or taking magnesium because it has to it has to be a balance. And if you have one without the other, you've got extra calcium. You can make kidney stones. You can put plaque. It, you know, calcium is in plaque that's on your blood vessels. So you can end up making plaque out of it. Uh, you need to have something that balances it. However, if you're taking calcium, don't take it with magnesium. You have to separate them by two hours in your intestines. Okay. Because they'll bind each other up, and then you won't get anything. So eat magnesium in your dinner, and then have calcium in your ice cream after uh, for dessert two hours later. Yeah. For just before you go to bed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just so. It's so, not so there are several different types coma. of calcium, though, that we can get. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, the one that you recommend is, is magnesium glycinate. Glycinate, and glycinate. The reason I like glycinate is mm -hmm. because it actually relaxes you. It's a good muscle relaxant, and it does not cause diarrhea. If you're looking for something to, to clean out your intestines, then you need magnesium citrate. And if you've had a colonoscopy, you've had this little bottle of stuff, and you drink it, clean and you then out. all right. of a sudden you get, have explosions yeah. of intestinal contents because that's what magnesium citrate does, but magnesium glycinate does not. Okay. So that's, that's something that I would suggest for the normal person who needs to add magnesium to their diet. So, so what about magnesium tarate? What is that for? Yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. It's It actually is best at lowering blood pressure. I mean, all of them lower blood pressure, but, mm -hmm. but tarate is the best vasodilator. Okay. So that means it helps with ED. It helps with decreasing blood pressure. It helps with decreasing, um, you know, blood pressure really is, you know, it's not a disease. It's a, it's a condition, but it isn't like something that debilitates you until it causes a it causes heart disease or it causes um, enlargement of your heart or well, if it causes your, a your notes say that magnesium tarate helps increase the strength of the heart muscle right it does so it, it helps maintain the flow even while it lowers the blood pressure mm -hmm. that's okay so and then, that's a real that's a really good answer to people with that have a I mean I have people that are on three blood pressure medicines uh -huh. And so if you're on three blood pressure medicines, then that would be the choice of, of the type of magnesium. And then there's another type, magnesium L-theronate. What yes. does that do? It actually is the best one if you have trouble remembering long-term and short-term. I, I had to look it up. I know. <laughs> yeah. Long-term and short-term memory and dementia p patients do very well when they get magnesium taurate. It, it helps dilate the blood vessels in the brain and it easily crosses the blood-brain barrier. So magnesium itself, all by itself, doesn't always get absorbed through the intestine or the skin. So you it needs a carrier? Combine it with something. Yeah. And so that's why we're talking about glycinate and taurate and, and those are those are the things you'd bind it with to actually absorb it and to take it to certain parts of your body. So like taking it across the blood-brain barrier is is the job of the um theonate. yeah. So it takes it across and it brings it to your brain. And so it will also help with anxiety. Okay. So we make some of our neurotransmitters in our gut. We make some in our brain. So uh, making it in both places is important, and, and magnesium helps with that. So a fundamental component of good health, living a good, healthy life, is having a healthy diet. Don't look at food 
as just comfort food for fun and gain. Uh, look at food as nutrition and fuel for your body. And the more you can find that balance point of eating healthily, the better your health will be. One of the ingredients of eating healthily that you need to concentrate on is an adequate supply of magnesium. So there you have it. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.